And so um, we do these polls for uh, several reasons, but um, uh, first and foremost is so that we can have some type of um, uh, beat on reality. So a lot of these things speak to the topics we'll be exploring over the next you know, several months in, in class. And so this is our check to make sure when we're reading a paper, when I'm saying something, that it actually is relevant um, and, and that and it's correct or that there might be some interesting nuance. Um, and so, uh, so we'll be collecting this data over the next uh, several weeks. Um, the first thing to say is that you guys, so one of the things that's due at the end of this week is, um, is our human subjects training. And so again, uh, just, just to reiterate, the human subjects training is, um, uh, is required anytime we do anything with people. Asking people questions on an anonymous survey is pretty, it's like on the spectrum of things, it's almost even non-existent, right? So it's, it's a pretty pro forma approval process. Um, but again, we have to go through this training because of some bad practices of previous researchers. So some people have intentionally deceived people. Some people have, um, you know, uh, uh, tried to cause people pain or withheld medical treatments, all that kind of stuff. Um, there's a huge long history on this we don't need to go into. But suffice it to say, this is our check to make sure that we're not um, posing a danger to people or being a hazard to people. And so that's why you guys have to do the human subjects. Even though a lot of the stuff that you'll hear about in that training is not relevant to us. It's about... It's about doing, you know, shock experiments on people or something like that. Um, uh, anyway, so that's what that is. So, so you're going to do that training. Again, that's through a nat, that's through a, um, a group that does this for people across the nation. And then at the end of that, you're going to either save your PDF or take a screenshot of the final certificate. And that's, that's the whole assignment for that thing. You're just going to upload that. Make sure you have your last name on the... On the um, uh, file and just upload it to that Google Drive. So that's that. Okay. Um, uh, now let's talk about our poll. Uh, so our poll is something um, I originally started doing um, with classes at UCLA in the 90s um, and then kept it in my other uh, campuses before I came here. Um, and, and again, originally this was just for us in our class to help us understand the subject. But around 2000 seven or so, um, some folks heard that we we're doing this and they said, hey, can we see your data? And I was like, oh no, this is just a class. This is not like, it's not a research project. This is just a class activity thing. And I'm like, yeah, 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 but we don't have any data at all. So can we please, can you please help us with this? this uh, most recently, this was um, some of the conservancy folks out on Catalina Island that were, um, that are trying to control a non-native deer population. And and they're really interested in, <clears throat> which is not a question we had. <clears throat> I, I trimmed it down to make it much smaller for you guys this year, even though it might not seem like it. Uh, and so we dropped some of those questions. But some of the questions we ask in, in many years is, which Channel Islands have you visited and how frequently do you go there? And so that kind of data is really helpful to our nonprofits and, and other agency folks. So, so what we did is we, we retooled this, uh, made it a little more robust. Um, in starting in 2007 and then had started you guys having to do training all that kind of stuff So the point is the point is what you guys are gathering is going to be first and foremost useful to us What happened? Oh, I didn't feel it uh, 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 I'll, I'll tell you guys my earthquake story. So my earthquake story was or I have many earthquake stories So uh, when I was teaching I was TA in a class at UCLA in grad school one of our buildings is really tall, and I was running, I teach a marine biology class, and I was teaching, I was teaching um, uh, a review session. There was a test the next day, and there was some, it was a, cl a class kind of like this, and I was, I happened to be doing the anatomy of a crab. So I had a crab up on the board, I drew a crab, and then I was facing the board, and I was, you know, like, what's this? And so I was like, gills, and then, you know, kind of like labeling it as a review. And as I was looking at the board, all of a sudden the root just, probably what just happened, maybe a little bit more, it kind of shook. And because it was a tall building, it, it sways a bit more, right? So, okay, whatever. And then, you know, stop shaking. I'm like, okay, what's this? And then we kind of worked our way through and, and finished. And I turned around and like most of the students are like you guys, they're like sitting there like, great, making notes. And there's these two students in the back. 
and their eyes are just like super big and they're like pale and they're just like sitting straight up and there's everybody else like hunched over making notes and uh and they're like okay is there any questions about this and i like, no. and and so some students like well, what about like to this scrub and we're, so we're asking questions and the two in the back are still like like frozen they're like not saying anything and then i see like one of them turn to the other and say something and then they raise a hand and he goes and he goes yeah i go yeah and she says uh was that an earthquake and i was like <laughs> yeah she goes Oh my God, should we leave? I'm like, oh, no, it's a small earthquake. Like, I think we should leave the building. And I was like, oh, no, I think we're fine. I think we should leave the building. I was like, oh no, if you think that's cool, if you want to go, oh, and they kind of stood up. I said, are you guys okay? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, wait, are you guys from California? Like, no, they were from Iowa. And it was their first earthquake, and they were super, super terrified. So I do not mean to make light of uh, earthquake that we just had, but um, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, did you guys feel the big one earlier today? Yeah, it was definitely a, a, a it was short though. It was like boom, and then it kind of stopped. Uh, well, I, I guess we just to just say that since Zach just walked in, we we're just talking about earthquakes. If there was to be a big earthquake, or there was to be that the fire drill or whatever, just to reiterate, safety wise, we go outside that door, down those big steps, and then we meet sort of right at the at the at the edge, the road edge of the mall right there. That's our, that's our rallying point if there were to be a, a major earthquake. Uh, so. Hurts, Doc, and cover. Don't you start running. <laughs> Doc and cover. Um, okay, anyway, so the point is, point is back to this is that um, uh, uh, will you guys will you, we'll use this data for ourselves as, we're, as we explore these issues as we go forward throughout the semester. Um, but also, um, uh, it's available to our partners, our, our, our community partners. So, so this is really a service thing that we're doing here, right? So this is an example of something, yeah, we're doing for a class. I, I've signed you guys to do this. But really, it's about helping our community, right? So it's one of our, uh, the first of two things we're going to do that's, that's generating data to help deal with some management issues. In this case, to help understand um, what's going on. So... Um, Many of these questions have been asked for several times, so we have a longitudinal data set. Um, some have been asked every single year since whatever, 2010 or whatever, 2008, I can't remember what, what, what year we've officially started uh, keeping track, but for a long time, right? So this is really helpful to track long-term trends on things. Other of these questions come on and wink on and stay on for a few years, and then we sort of cycle them off. Other questions we sort of, because otherwise this thing would be just too massive, we ask in one year and then take a year off and then ask the next year, that kind of stuff. So that it's a mix of things like that. So that's where they come from. Um, uh, yes, okay, cool. So, um, so we'll talk about technique in a second, but, but that's the basic idea, right? So the basic idea is we're trying to get random cross sections of our community, right? And what is our community for the purpose of this study? Our community is Los Angeles, Ventura, Santa Barbara counties. That's our, that's our swath. So every once in a while somebody goes to visit grandma or something and drives up to Tahoe or, or gets on a plane to Phoenix and they're like, hey, can I do the survey in Phoenix or can I do the survey in Sacramento? And the answer is no. So we're, we're, we're surveying people in one of these three counties so that we have robust data. Um, and so, so that's, it's not because not we don't care about those other folks, but we can't do a good job of characterizing their thing. The other, yeah. Is the public approval and the seafood survey the same thing? No, seafood survey is a different assignment. Yeah, but we also, but we also do that also in the three counties as well. So yeah, so, so, um, so basically the majority of stuff you're gonna get is probably be Ventura County, but you know, we bleed into LA and Santa Barbara, both for this and that next assignment. Um, Again, just because we can't do everything everywhere and we want some kind of robust assessment of what's going on. Um, the general philosophy about this is we want, we want a cross-section of people. And so, and so uh, that's why we don't do these surveys. Uh, so I, I had you guys do, you know, do one with, with somebody, you know, one of your, some, you know, just a trial one with somebody, right? So that, that's okay. But now from here on out, um, we do not survey folks on campus. We do not survey our fellow students, right? So the idea here is we want to get cross-section, right? And 
I am, you and I are more likely to, to answer these questions alike. And you and your roommate are more likely to answer these questions alike. And it's not that your opinion or your roommate's opinion is not valid, but we're trying to get a random cross section. We're trying to get old people, uh, young people, um, uh, people at the coast, uh, wealthy people, poor people. We're trying to get, you know, trying to get a cross section. And so, um, and so that's why it's important to not just go to all your 10 friends and, hey, can you feel this out? Can you feel this out? Can you feel this out? Right. You could ask one of them or something like that, right? But, but the idea is we really want to cast a wide net. And it's not helpful to us if we just ask people that are in our own social groups what you think, right? A little bit okay, but, but we want a cross section. The only no-go other than, you know, can't do campus, can't do CSUCI students. Uh, the only other no-go is that, and this has to do with just legal issues and stuff, we can only do people that are 18 years or older, right? So we don't do children. And then as you'll, if you haven't taken the training yet, um, we also, which does, doesn't apply to us, but we also don't do people that have, um, that uh, we potentially could exploit. So that means uh, people with reduced mental capacity or people in prison. So you guys are not allowed to go to prison and give these to prisoners. But so those don't really pretty much pertain to us. Mostly it's just the age thing. Every once in a while, you guys will do some survey and you're gonna fill it out. And then because we asked what year they were born, um, uh, you're like, oh crap, the person's 17 or something, right? So if that accidentally happens, that's okay. But, but if, if, if they look young, you say, are you 18? You're like, no, like, oh, okay, sorry, this is only for people that are 18 and older. Um, so, so, but you shouldn't be going to like playgrounds <laughs> having the like little kids <laughs> take these, right? So you have their parents, you have their mom or their dad do it, but you don't want to do the, the kiddos. Make sense? Okay, cool. Um, uh, the other thing, which, which we'll talk about more once we start getting into this and you guys do, do a few more and start, we have some more conversations about uh, techniques and stuff, how to do this. Um, the other thing is you can only do a maximum of 25 at any one particular place. So in other words, they don't want everybody to go to one place and do all of them from one single thing because we need to, just like we want to have different um, human group demographic areas, we also want to make sure we're sort of doing spatially as well. So, so 25 is the most. What about like, if it's a gym, for example, um, could you do another gym? Sure, sure. It's just, it's just that particular thing with those particular people to go to that barbecue or people to go to that whatever. Yeah, so, so yeah. So it, it, it's not meant to be super restrictive. It's just meant to have a rule of thumb so we don't overly sample all the people, I don't know, uh, that are super trying to lose weight or something. <laughs> We'll talk about that. <clears throat> so, so we have three different. Well, I think I think the syllabus needs to be updated, but but we have three different um, uh, uh, triggers. So at the end, at the end of all this, fifty-five is the goal. Fifty-five is the goal per person. So um, it's a lot of work. I get it. It's a lot of work, and so we will. So that's reflected in the amount of the grade, and also some of the other things we'll do this semester. So, so I, I get it's a lot of work. So half of the grade for this assignment is just doing this, right? So if you just do this, you already have 50% of the points before we even get to looking at the analysis or whatever. And that's a reflection of how I, I get it. it takes hours and hours. It takes a lot of time. We'll talk about techniques. Um, uh, I want you guys to do the first five, and then, we can, and then we'll have more experience. And we can, it makes more sense. It doesn't really help right now to have these conversations. But I'll just say that the most helpful thing is to have a couple different clipboards. That's how, it, that's how you guys get through this stuff pretty fast. So when you go to an area like your gym or whatever, you can give, hey, would you mind taking this? Would you mind taking this? Would you mind taking this? And then like they're like, woo. Where people have been most frustrated over the years is when they just bring like one clipboard and they give it to an old couple, and they may, which are very nice people, but they maybe take longer than other people. And they're like, I can't quite read this, right? And so that's cool. But then they're, they got the clipboard for... 25 minutes or something and you're like and all these people are walking by like ah, ah, ah. so having a couple different clipboards and we have clipboards you guys can take um, that that's doing multiple ones at once is, is usually the best way um, and 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 the place to do this any publicly accessible place at all so parks are great uh, 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 brew pubs whatever that kind of stuff um, uh, the best places are where people are trapped <laughs> <laughs> Not that we want to torture them, 
But like the classic one is like a car wash place, right? Where somebody has their car and their car's gonna be like being washed for 20 minutes or something. And they're sort of sitting in the lobby, drinking coffee, watching the TV, like that, those kind of places, um, those tend to be the, the best. Um, again, uh, publicly accessible places. So every once in a while, um, uh, maybe, um, and, and, and this is a, you guys have a particularly challenging year because we're super polarized as a country. And every four years, this gets hard to do because at this time as we have the presidential election coming around, a lot of people are just like, I don't even, because you might have a clipboard and they're like, I, I don't, you know, you know, I'm just gonna walk this way when I see you coming. Um, so, so um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's the world that we're in these days. What I'll say is this data that you guys have been collecting over the years, I think, is some of the best data that exists for, for certainly for our part of California. Absolutely no question. What, what you're doing is what um, people have done for a long time. That began to change um, about 20 years ago. So about 20 years ago, when everybody started getting on the internet, people were like, oh, we can do this on the, I, sorry, let me take that back even further. So about 40 years ago, it started to change where people started doing calls. So, so calling you on, your, on a phone to do um, polling and stuff, right? Uh, and that kind of went for a while. And then with the sort of explosion of cell phones starting about 30 years ago and then really getting going about 20 years ago, uh, and the abandonment of landlines. You guys probably don't even call them landlines, right? You just call them my cell phone, right? So, so back in the day, everybody had a landline. And so when people would randomize the, to, to reach out to people, first everybody's doing this face-to-face -face, and they're like, oh, that's a pain in the butt. So then we'll do it over phone with phone banks. And then the phone banks got to be a problem. So now, even though people still do phone stuff, so now the most common way to do this stuff is with what are known as panels. Inter, so internet-based surveys, right? And, um, you know, if you wanted to say, if I have my website and I want to say, hey, is my website good or bad? I could just put my survey up on my website, right? And people that come to my website, you know, a subset of them would say good or bad and that would be helpful. But if I want to see what the general public thinks, right, that's a problem because only a subset of people are on the internet. Only a subset of people come to my website so inherently, I'm already biasing the population to people that are technologically savvy, people that have time to surf the web, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so these companies have grown up and virtually all of the, a very, very large fraction of the polling that's done now is done with these um, online polling groups. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying they're nefarious or bad per se, but they're different. They're really different. And so what they do is they use demographics to estimate who should be in their population, right? So, um, well, I, when you say, you know, Angelina wants to do a survey, and, she's like, and then they're gonna say, what do you wanna do a survey of? And you say, I wanna do a survey of residents of Ventura County. And she'll go, and go okay. And then there's this, and so then they'll look in their census data and they'll say, oh, the average age of a Ventura County residence is X, and the age distribution is this, the sex distribution is this, the income distribution is this, and all these different things, right? And they say, okay, this is this is the, the the type of the range of people and the average people that live in Ventura County. So then I'm gonna um, get a bunch of people either pay usually pay them, pay them, or somehow they compensate them to to be on my panel. And then for people that aren't, for people that wouldn't even engage with that, which are mostly folks that are low income, they will pay them and a lot of times they'll do things like they'll provide internet service for them like so so folks that um, are in a community like a rural community or a low-income community um, they want their feedback on these topics so they'll do something like hey once you know twice a month you have to fill out one of these surveys we give you or something like that right so it's it's a very different approach than what we're doing which is randomly encountering cross sections of people the other thing to say about that is it's very, very, very difficult to get to the methods these days. It used to be, you know, 30 years ago when someone did an opinion poll, we'd go like, ah, okay, so okay, so what was the question? The question is X. All the questions would be listed. And then what'd you do? Uh, then we went between date X and date Y. We went to, you know, whatever, the beach or, or parks or whatever the heck. 
schools or something, and we surveyed, you know, all these people. I'm like, okay, cool. Now, a lot of that is proprietary. So these companies that provide these services for the, for the, um, for the panels, good luck trying to get to the, so they'll say, oh, we surveyed people using an online, thing. you know, they'll, they'll qualitatively tell you what you, they did, but as far as the actual mechanisms and methods, it's very difficult. So why did you pick, you know, why did you pick those 50 males as opposed to these 50 males or whatever? Oh, it's like, you know, oh, we use, we use demographic estimates. Like, well, how did you do demographic estimates? We did demographic estimates, right? And so, so it's, it's because it's a, it's a for, they're mostly for-profit businesses, it's hard to get to that data, right? So I'm not, I'm not saying that data is all wrong or whatever, but it's as, as researchers, as people that are trying to talk with the public and help make progress, it's hard to know how representative that stuff is. Our data is, is, is representative. So that's why we've kept doing this face-to-face this -face thing. We did pivot a little teeny bit during the pandemic when we weren't allowed to ever be in, in, in um, contact with, you know, face-to-face -face with folks for a bit. So we did pivot to an online poll version that year, that actually two years. Um, so, I mean, we had to, didn't have a choice. I don't know how good that data is. It's, it's a very different data set. So, um, so that's the background here. Okay, so let's talk about, um, well, we can talk about the questions now or I can have you guys start to do some practice entering. Um, uh, but uh, let me first ask, did you guys have any questions about, about so firstly, um, so you took it yourself and then you had a bud or somebody take it. Um, was, did you guys notice any problems with any spelling errors or grammatical errors or anything like that that was funky? Okay. Okay. Um, then um, maybe what we'll do next is we'll take a, a little bit of a pause here and you guys can start practicing entering this and then we'll keep this conversation going talking about the questions in detail after. Is it, or the what? You said that there's different like public opinion polls and seafood surveys? Yeah, seafood surveys, we're not even talking about those. So that's later in the semester. Oh. So don't worry about seafood surveys for now. Yeah. Um, okay, so so have a look at this. So, uh, well, actually one more thing before we leave the actual survey. survey. Okay, so this is, I, I give this to someone and they fill it out. We're also not trying to collect any unique identifying information, right? There's demographics at the end, but we're not trying to be, I don't want to be able to identify that one person, right? The, the point here is to be anonymous. And so, and so uh, that's a real thing. So, you know, today's date, and then there's questions for them to, to answer. Um, uh, sometimes people will start on a survey and they're like, ah, it's too long, I don't want to do it. And they'll stop, right? So they have to get through at least the, the first page or so, right? So if they don't get all the way to the end, that can still count. But, but if they just do a couple questions, that, that, that doesn't count, right? Um, in particular, the demographic questions at the end are really helpful, but sometimes people are squirrely about that. And even though we're like, this is anonymous, sometimes they just don't wanna answer them and that, that's okay, right? So again, we want as much demographic information to help us interpret it, but it's cool. The most common ones you'll get is especially with I'll just say over the years, <laughs> older ladies, they're like, why do you need the year I was born? You know, and it's like, look, I'm not trying to attack your age. It's just, you know, that kind of thing. Um, uh, but what I would, but what you should do though, there's no line for this, after the person walks away, a long time after they walk away, because you want them to walk away and just start making stuff down. You want to go ahead and jot somewhere on here the location and the, and the, and the, so the date should be on here, but the, the time and the location, because those would be those would be some things we enter into the database too. Um, but but you know again, putting that on makes it seem a little bit like we're tracking people. We're not. We're just trying to keep track of of you know generally where these surveys were done. So that's why there isn't a specific line for that. But after they've gone, you know, just flip it over the back and just you know jot it down. An approximate time is fine. It's just the time they started. Just so we have we want to know is this like in the morning or is this you know. 11 o'clock at night out in front of the club or, you know, that kind of thing, right? Okay, cool. So let's have a look at our data entry then, and then we'll take a pause and you, you take a few minutes, you guys can hit the bathroom and do all kinds of, okay, so this is our Google Sheet that you guys will enter data in. So, um, so let me first remind you guys that um, 
This is the master sheet, and this is what we'll be checking to see if everybody has their stuff entered over you know, the next month or so. Um, and, uh, and so it's all laid out. So it should be pretty straightforward uh, to figure it out. But remember, you're not, uh, the best practice is not to type directly into this data sheet. The best practice is for you to make your own copy of this data sheet, either download it to your desktop, which is probably the best, or if you're on a borrowed laptop, you don't have whatever, you know, make a copy of this and then save that to your own personal Google Drive, right? Enter the stuff in there and you know, type the, type the, do the data entry in there and keep that as your log of stuff. And then once you get the stuff entered for the day, so today you're gonna enter, you know, your, your bud survey, or whatever. Once that's in there, copy it from the other one and then go back to this main one and just paste it in, right, into your section. And so it's set up that as we start to scroll down, it's set up so that every, every row is one survey, right? So, so when, you, when the data from the survey comes in, it's all on, on that particular line, scrolling over to the right. As we go down, everybody has a slot, right? So everybody's name should be there and all that kind of good stuff. And um, so, so you don't need to insert rows. You don't need to sort of copy over somebody else's stuff. So there's, you know, um, just make sure your your paste when you go you go to paste it in. You're paste it in your right your right uh, uh, area. Cool. All right, let's take a look at what this looks like. So the first little bit over here to the left is the is the general stuff. Now um, the one the I think the ones I gave you guys were a draft version. There's, I noticed a couple errors that I caught that I fixed. And so if you look up in the upper left, it'll say whatever it is, 18.2. So for most of you guys, this, this first one, they're all gonna be 18.2. But we're, we're, already on, we're already on to 18.3. Maybe we find another error in a week or two and we change to 18.4. So you just wanna make sure that you're entering the right number. And, uh, and then it's, it's your name. And so all the stuff over here to the left, you don't need to do anything with. You're gonna put the date that you did the survey in. The t and, and these are, this first few are just examples. As with all of our data sheets, we have some just examples there. So if you're wondering, if you're kind of stuck, you can scroll up and see, see some examples. Um, obviously, as people start to enter stuff, we're gonna start to see more things in the data sheet. Um, and then I did a few surveys um, uh, of my own to sort of uh, begin to uh, show you guys how to do this. So the first thing to say is, let's have a look here. So this is our first, Okay, so let's have a look right here. Okay, so here's a survey, I give it to people. Sometimes, so people answer the surveys, but they might skip a question. Maybe they're confused by it, they don't understand, or whatever. So, so not everybody always fills out every single question, right? So the first thing we wanna be able to track in our survey is did someone answer that question, right? Because there's always a possibility they did or they didn't. And so the very first thing we see in our data entry is this thing that says answered. So here, here is our question one thing. And so what, what we will use in our, um, the majority of the entry for us in this data sheet is gonna be a one or a zero. A zero is didn't check or no, and a, and a one is a they checked it or, or a yes. So in this case, for, for this person's response, they said, they did answer. They did answer the, the question, number one. So I put a one there in the answered column. And then next is I wrote in whatever they put in. Okay, I wrote in, I wrote in verbatim whatever they typed. These first two are fill in the blank, right? There's a couple more, there's something like, there's like how many ounces of seafood did you eat, right? That, that are sort of people will write something in. And there's also some options where there's an other option where people could write things elsewhere. Um, and so what we'll do is before we do our class analysis, we're gonna standardize, Let's have a look. So this one says coast, this person typed in coast. This next person typed in beach with a lowercase b. This person typed in beach with an uppercase b, right? So, so we'll go through and this gray column is a place that you do not have to do anything to right now. We will eventually translate this. So we'll probably have beach with a lowercase b and it'll, it'll make it all a standard language so that we're sure that when we count the number of beaches, it's all the same. Um, does that make sense? Okay, so the gray, you just skip over. Okay, so, okay, the same thing over here. Okay, now we get to, um, let's actually skip this for a bit. 
Let's do, let's do, let's do look at question number four, for example. Actually, that'll be confusing too. Let's talk, let's start question five to just orient you. Okay, so here's this one about, hey, when you purchase seafood, um, and notice I don't write the whole name of the, the whole, um, all the words of the question, because it just gets confusing, but the, the numbers are correct, Q5, Q6, and then it's this little, this term here is a little brief de description of the question. So this is the one about purchasing seafood, for example. Also note that um, it's not always the case that the full, that all the word, all the answers are always spelled out. It's just, you know, to keep it simple and tight. So the first time or two, you might have to double check. Oh, is it this column or that? But it should be pretty, makes sense. Um, it's mostly going from the left side of the poll to the right is also how the, how the options are filled out. And so in this case, it's about purchasing seafood. Do they answer it? Yes. So they answer these. So I put the, the one here, meaning that they, they did provide an answer. And then... Now we're into the data parts of it. And so in this case, this person, in this case, this person said they never ask about where their um, seafood comes from, right? Totally legit, all good. Um, and so, and that's how we progress. So that's the majority of the things you enter are gonna be like that, right? Here's the important thing. Zeros matter. So in this question for seafood and fisheries, we said, you know, which of these describes your behavior basically, right? And they're self-identifying one of these behaviors or that they don't know, right? But they're picking one of these things. So um, I, we know that this person does not always ask about seafood. That would be different if the person had, um, if the person had skipped this question, so if she had skipped this question, I would enter that as a zero here, meaning they did not tick that, they did not give me any answers, and then all the things to the right would be left blank, because in 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 these these ones up here, I know that they definitely did not occasionally ask that. Here, I don't know. They just didn't tell me anything. Does that make sense? So it's important to remember that zeros are not blanks. Zeros are, are options that people did not pick. Cool? So the majority of the questions are like that. Um, a few others are a little funky. Um, and so one of them is this guy here. And so the funky ones are, I've made blue just to sort of visually remind you and, and that you understand. So the blue columns are something other than a one or a zero. And it's just, it's just because of how the data, it'll be easier when we get to analyzing the data. Um, so this one uh, says, hey, uh, how has your plastic usage changed um, compared to last year, right? So has it gone up, stayed the same, whatever, da, 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 da. And so in this case, rather than having um, all the columns that say, uh, increase a lot, increase somewhat, no change, all, which we could have done, um, we're going to enter it as a numerical value. And the legend is up here. So if they said much more, I'm going to put that as a three. If they said more, I'm going to put that as a one. If they said no change, you're going to have a zero. If they said less than uh, the previous year, I'm going, to, I'm going to say a minus. And if they say much less, I'm going to say a, a minus three. If they, if they say I don't know, I'm going to put 9999 in there. And if they didn't answer the question, I'll leave it blank. So, so that one's a little bit funky, but, but we're putting a numerical value onto their, their degree of, of uh, plasticness or, or plastic usage. Again, the first couple times through this might be a little bit confusing, then it'll make sense. Okay, Carson. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. This one should be like that. That's right, good. That was one of my examples. Excellent catch, good, I like it. Um, another one is, okay, so, so this 18.2, uh, uh, I realized there's a couple things we, we were missing on here. So the 18.3, I fixed it. So one of them didn't have an, I don't know that probably should have an, I don't know. <clears throat> like this guy didn't have an, I don't know. Um, and so. Since I entered that as an 18.2, there wasn't a field called I don't know. 
So I, I left that one blank because they didn't see that option. But, but for the majority going forward, that you're going to have stuff in there. So I just flagged it to make sure that was clear. Um, another one, uh, just so you guys see this since we're on this question, is um, these guys, we have some options uh, occasionally where it says other. So in our normal approach, it's did they answer this or they didn't, did they not answer it? And so if they answered it, cool. Um, so let's make an example here. So like maybe they said this. And this was um, uh, uh, in my neighbor. I can't type neighborhood for some reason. But, um, but if sometimes they, they check the other, this would be a column where we would just type in whatever the hell they said, right? So you, you might get a few of those every once in a while. Um, right, the last, last thing is because I, I cut out a bunch of questions to make this shorter for you guys this, this year because of the presidential election and all that kind of stuff. But one of the things I realized I cut um, was one of our method questions that, that are important. And so we didn't have one. So I, I, I re-added this in. So this is, again, we're not intentionally trying to mislead anyone. We're not trying to deceive anyone. We're trying to make people feel stupid. One of the most common things people will say is like, Oh God, I feel like I should know all this. I don't know. And it's like, it's all good. It's all good. Just tell us what you think. You know, if you're not sure, just hit unsure. It's not, it's all good. But one of the things we typically do is we try to calculate error rate. And this is the biggest problem with these surveys that I told you about now, how people are, how they're done. So you, you see a, the classic case, you see the presidential opinion polls. Kamala Harris is here or Donald Trump is here. And then it'll say some percentage point and it'll say like plus or minus 3%. And you're like, where does the plus or minus 3% come from, right? And uh, that is an estimate of the error, right? So that's an estimate of us saying how confident we are that this is really what the people think or this is really the, the representation of the population we're sampling. So again, the problem with these online survey companies that sort of lock everything down and don't let you see it, it's hard to know. And the reality is, most people do not calculate their error. So if I'm gonna survey you guys today, I'm not gonna calculate your error. We did a study two years ago or something, or three years ago or something, we determined that when we do a, a class, like our class, uh, you know, in an American university, it's got like a 5% error. And so then we just say, ah, our poll has an accuracy of 5%. That doesn't really smell right to me, especially when we're doing something like this. It'd be one thing if we were all surveying um, the brand of Fritos that people like most and that we have all kinds of data and thousands of years of data and all these kinds of things, right? That'd be one thing. But again, very few people, if anybody do, nobody does routine surveying where we're surveying. And generally speaking, people don't really ask about coastal management. So those, those polls I found for you guys, it's hard to find a lot of uh, you know, public stuff. And so therefore, what we try to do is every one of our polls, we try to look at what one estimate of error, there's many sources of error, right? But one source of error is people just um, not really reading the questions or not caring about reading the questions or whatever. So we have an option here. Normally we have a couple options, but because we made it short, we have one. But this is, so there's no such thing as plastics on Mars, right? There just isn't. Um, and so this is one measure, one way to estimate error. So some people just go, plastics, plastics are everywhere. Tick, 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 right? So that tells us that that person is um, not a bad person, but maybe they're not closely reading every single question, right? And so that's going to get, so the percent of people that's, that answered the, the plastic question that thinks that or they've heard or seen plastic about, you know, stories about plastic being on Mars, no stories exist. So that's a measure of um, error. So that's why I realized we didn't have that. And so that's why that's a new category on the 18.3. Cool? I think it's because it's not 18.2, but it was on the ones that we asked. The Mars one? No, Okay, okay. The, the, the first version I gave out didn't have it in it. So. So I may, I've made 18.3s now, so maybe I gave you guys an 18.3. But, but, but it doesn't matter. You just look on the 18, make sure you enter the, 
the right number on the poll, and we'll, we can clean that up after the fact. Are you allowed to by proxy, like for um, surveys? Like if I... If you have a friend working in LA or something, give it to, sure, sure. Can you write it for them? Uh, sure, 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 yeah. And then does it have to be the physical copy? Okay, so okay, so okay, last little bit. Okay, so let, let me get to the last little. Okay, so the last little bit is is part of our um, part of this deal with the human subjects stuff. Um, is that we have to? Again, this is all built around collecting like medical data, which we're not doing, or something like that. But so we have to say, we have to archive our data in some way, shape, or form. With the idea being. Let's say someone was really PO'd at us. I, I can't imagine why, but somebody's really PO'd at us and like, how dare you, Jason, survey me or something, and I want to see the data, right? That kind of thing. So we have to physically archive our instrument for uh, a period of time. I, it changes all the time. I don't know. Currently, I think it's like two years or something like that, right? So what that means is you guys have your survey. You're, you're gonna enter them. And then my recommendation from you is when you're done entering them, like today, the first one you do, go back to your, it'll be, it'll be your first one. So, you know, go back to, you know, whatever. Um, you're right here. I can see this is your replicate, where it says replicate. Write on the back your name and one or two or three or whatever and just, and just circle it, right? Sometimes there's, we're going to have some errors as we type it in, it's just it always happens. As so we go through and do the QA, QC process, we'll find, oh, uh, you know, wait, wait, why is there two things ticked in this, in this row, right? So we can go back and find, okay, okay, it's my 13th survey. Let me go find it. And then, and then once we get everything entered and we're all good, you guys are going to eventually give me all of those surveys. So over here are some of the, are the surveys from last year, for example. And so the last step is you just need to, you'll throw a rubber band around all your surveys and you just give the stack to me. And we'll just put them over there. And then generally speaking, nothing happens. And after a couple of years, once we pass the thing, we can, we can recycle them. But that's a, that's a part of a human subjects kind of data control thing, which seems very archaic. And it is, but it's because a lot of people now do this like with online stuff. So it's super simple. So they're like, oh, we just talk about the instrument. Um, so the point there is just when you, if you do that, whatever, that's cool. I would just note that, you know, transcribed for, or, you know, I recorded for, you know, this person or whatever. But, but eventually you guys need to turn in a, a physical survey for each thing. So when we're like doing the surveys and trying to go through the manual, does anyone have to put up like Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if someone's like non-sighted or something, you can do it, but it, it, it's, uh, it'll take way longer if you do that. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, you know, if there is a case, a case if, yeah, you know, sure, that's, that's okay occasionally, but that would just, that'll take you way too long. Um, uh, the other one that you'll get, the other one you get, again, this will sort of wait until after we do our, our first uh, uh, tri hardcore trial of getting data, but, but um, a lot of times you'll get this, oh, sorry, yeah, so, um, what is the what is the EV twenty thirty five policy of the state of California again? Right, and so, so it's real important that we get the general public's take on things. We're not trying to make people feel stupid. We don't think they're stupid. We don't think they're naive. We don't think they're disengaged. Nothing like that. But um, what's important is you're like, hey, I'm I'm working on a project for a class of mine at Cal State Channel Islands, and we're doing this uh, anonymous survey. I was wondering if you might take a few minutes and just. Um, give me your your op opinions about these these issues, right? And maybe there's a few more words you go back and forth, or whatever, and then you give it to them, right? The idea is not you should not be answering questions for them about the content on the survey. You can say, oh, I'm more than happy to to chat with you about these things after, but but you know we need to get your 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 cold opinion on them first, right? And so that's. That um, again, it tends to be the older folks that that um, they feel really embarrassed. Like I feel really stupid. I should really understand. It's like it's all good. If you don't understand, go ahead and click on sure or skip that question. It's all good. It's all good. It really is. We're trying to understand how many people even know about these issues too. So, um, but you don't. But it's sometimes very easy to get sucked into a conversation about this, and then we're starting to to bias or maybe potentially influence 
how those folks think, right? Or how they respond to us.